All right, so this is the kit that I got. I ordered this kit from AZ Pro Performance because they are basically about three miles away from my house, right down the street. And uh, it's good to support local business. So um, basically I picked up the CPP spindle from them, from their shop, and they placed the order and everything to a little shop for all these pieces. So this is a kit for a 71, 72 Chevy slash GMC. Basically, the only difference, I believe, is this, this spindle here is specific to those years. Um, other years may have uh, different spindles. And also, there's different kits available. <clears throat> Basically, the same kit with a different spindle set up. You can get a Willwood uh, spindle. I think they even they might even work with the Willwood Pro spindles, but I'm not 100% sure. But if you go to the Little Shop uh, website or even the AZ Pro Performance website, you would be able to see that. So just some of the parts here, we have the two and a half inch drop spindle from CPP. And this is a modular spindle. The spindle I have on my truck right now is a two and a half inch CPP, but it is the standard one with the brake caliper ears. <clears throat> so that would not work um, because of this bracket right here. I believe this is called a radial bracket, radial. And this bracket will attach back here and then hold the caliper up at the top so but yeah just look at that bracket look at the, the machine work on that it's it's almost a shame to hide it in the truck but yeah it's where it's going so you come with some good uh, uh <clears throat> mounting bolts and this was an option for the uh, braided uh, brake hose kit you can either order it with or without i went ahead and ordered it with save on the headaches this is the rotor that this one comes with. This is a 14 inch rotor. Uh, Little Shop also has some kits up to 16 inch that are pretty impressive. But uh, 14 was good for me. I have 20 inch wheels. I am running um, US Mag Ramblers. So we'll see how they turn out under that. This is the aluminum top hat <clears throat> made by Little Shop. I know Willwood makes their own too, but I believe for this kit, it looks like Little Shop made this one, and it is, again, very nice, very light, so that'll be nice. Rotors are not light, top hat is light. So then we have the hub. We have this beautiful billet hub. Um, this is also made by Little Shop. And if you just, like again, look at the CNC on that, it has the uh, hardened races pressed into it, just like any normal aluminum adapter wood so it comes with bearings and then it comes with this really nice center cap right here it's a o-ring cap and it has a little notch that aligns up to it and just basically snaps right in there and completes the uh, whole the whole hub assembly very nice also comes with the wheel studs already screwed in i would believe looking at the allen wrenches i believe they're screw type so if you wanted to do Different ones too, like um, on my Camaro, I have some of the gold, uh, the gold NASCAR ones that are nice and smooth. They have like a little smooth tip on them, a little bit longer. But I was going for more of a Trans Am look on the Camaro. And so then finally, we move on to the six piston Woolwoods. These are again for the 14 inch. And it's kind of cool. You can see the different uh, piston sizes in here. And the big fat piston is the one that goes up at the front. And I believe there is an arrow right there telling you the direction that that is supposed to be mounted on. And it comes with brake pads and a little bit of Loctite. So it's going to be a little bit of work assembling this together. But um, it'll be fun. So we'll move on to the next step. So this is the <clears throat> Willwood rotor, and this is the little shop um, aluminum hub. And I've already put one together. It's pretty straightforward. These um, bolts <clears throat> don't have holes in them, so they do not appear to be bolts that require safety wire. Um, on the instructions from Little Shop, they're basically Willwood instructions, and they, <clears throat> using their top hat, and their Willwood bolts, they would require uh, safety wire, but 
These ones do not. I'm using some uh, Loctite 271 <clears throat> that came with the uh, package. So that's what the rotor looks like new. And you can order these rotors slotted and cross-drilled or just slotted. I think it's a $100 option for the cross-drilled and slotted. So I went ahead and did that. I like the way it looks. Um, but anyway, we'll uh, get to assembling this. And basically to assemble this, we're going to make sure that all of these are nice and smooth, and they are. They're all, all really good. We're gonna put some uh, Loctite on these bolts, and we're gonna torque them initially to 100 inch-pounds, and then uh, finally to 155 inch-pounds. All right, so I went ahead and took the old CPP spindle off, and now the new one is on, and it was a perfect fit. Um, I think when I ordered this spindle from AZ Pro, this one is a 71 to 72, and it, uh, it fit the CPP control arms. So I know there can be variances in the CPP control arms, I believe, like on some of the, like the Pro Spindle or whatever they have, I think uses 73 and up components. So those ball joints may be different, <clears throat> but on this one, um, it was a perfect fit. So moving on to the next step. So the CPP spindle is all mounted up now. <clears throat> I went ahead and did a uh, mount up of the, of the hub. Um, bearings aren't packed right now. We're just trying to see, make sure everything fits. This is the uh, support attached here. Um, again, this one just has, I put a little shim in there. And then we have the washer and the nut back here. <clears throat> Once we're done with this, I believe it gets torqued to, I'd have to verify, but I think it was 125 foot-pounds. So, <clears throat> again, the radial support. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mount the rotor. And the rotor is directional, <clears throat> so we'll have the arrow going this way. And also... If we look at the piston, I'm, I'm sorry, not the piston, the caliper, if we look at the caliper, <clears throat> we can see that that has an arrow also, so that is going to be facing forward. So the rotor is now mounted. Um, I went ahead and put the caliper on. Um, I added a couple shims on here for the radial to get this off, because initially when I was spinning it, it was... Um, it was rubbing, so I took one shim. That was not enough, so I have two shims on there right now, and it spins very nicely. I can see, like, right here that I'm going to have to add a spacer to probably take the caliper that way just a little bit, but it's, it's pretty close. So better to have to move that way than move this way. So we see I have the uh, fitting already installed. There's a pipe end, and then there's this tapered end, more like an A end fitting, but I'm sure it's called something else. But I believe this is a dry fitting, and then this one, we uh, <clears throat> it says to wrap with Teflon. So that is done, and then you can see the hose is still connected up here on this brake caliper. So we're gonna connect this one now and then we'll move on to the other, to the other side all right so this is the passenger side passenger side has it all mounted up now I haven't hooked up the 
brake line on the driver's side yet, but I just did on the passenger side. So you can see how it's sitting in there. I haven't connected the tie rod yet, so we can really swing it back and forth and make it easy to uh, to install. Um, installed the fittings that they gave me. I purchased the uh, hose kit. I don't remember which one. I think it's a 16-inch hose kit. So this has uh, plenty of room here. I uh, took off the old one. When I took off the old one, I, I clamped it so I wouldn't get brake fluid everywhere. A little bit of brake fluid came out there. I had some paper towels set up around here just to make sure that it didn't jack up the powder coating or paint or anything on the uh, the control arms or, or anywhere. Um, so this is an 11 16th here. And on the other side, we have a 3 8 uh, took that apart. Uh, they gave me a clip like this, so I clipped it on that side, and it is good to go. So we're going to move on to the other side, and I replace the cable. I'm sorry, <laughs> the brake line on that side, and then we'll start uh, bleeding these guys. There is one thing I wanted to mention about uh, these CPP spindles. My old spindles actually had a piece of metal actually that protruded from the outside and would hit the uh, stop right there. <clears throat> but these ones look like they have a hole where I'm assuming they may have a, a bolt or some sort of adjustable hard stop. So we'll have to figure that out because obviously we don't want it <clears throat> turning more than it actually should in hitting any of these parts. All right, so I've been bleeding my brakes. I uh, initially did a gravity bleed, so I let everything kind of open up the bleeder screw, let everything run down to where it was starting to come out of the bleeder screw, and then uh, just let it flow for a little bit. <clears throat> made sure there's some paper towels around the bleeder screws, um, and also made sure that my uh, master cylinder is full. So now I'm doing the one-man bleeder. I already did the passenger side. You want to start at the side furthest away. Um, I don't have to bleed the rear brakes on this because of the way the master cylinder is set up. So I have a Willwood master cylinder with a hydro boost, but I also have the Willwood proportioning valve. And this proportioning valve isolates the front from the rear. So, which is super nice. I don't have to get under the back of the truck and... Uh, mess with anything like that. If you have like a GM proportioning or a combination valve, I believe the combination valve still, um, you have to bleed the whole thing. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you do. But anyway, so I got a one man bleeder kit. Cheap, it's like 10 bucks, probably cheaper at um, Harbor Freight or online. Uh, it's working actually really well. It fits over the the uh, bleeder valve very nicely, nice and tight. And so um, just been getting a little bit of air in it. And I haven't gotten many air bubbles out. It takes about, I, I do four and then I go check and then I do four more pumps and then it seems to be pretty much done at this point. So uh, Willwood has you start with the outside of the master cylinder and then do the, the second bleeder screw. The truck is back down on the ground now. <clears throat> wheels tightened up, uh, looked for any leaks, fired it up earlier and just stepped on the brakes a few times just to make sure nothing bled out, everything seems to be fine. We're going to take it for a spin, breaking the rotors and the pads. Uh, looks like there's plenty of clearance. Looks, They look great. All right, truck is back from the break-in drive. I also took it for a little bit longer drive, did some stops from... 50 to 30, <clears throat> but the initial stops were, they said, like 2 to 5, 5 to 10, and yeah, it, it made some bad noises until I got that black coating off. A little bit of smell, but yeah, went away. Brakes worked great, so I'll probably put it up in the air, just make sure that the uh, bearings are nice and tight, the wheels are tight. I may have my alignment checked just to see what they say. I don't know if I need an alignment, but they are different spindles. Their new spindles are CPP. <clears throat> they're supposed to have a little bit of a, I guess they, they're supposed to pull the wheels in. They're, like I said, there's been some debate on that, but 
looking at it, it looks like there is actually more wheel space in there. So it's good to know. But yeah, that's what the wheels look like now. I'm sorry, not the wheels. The brake rotors look like that now. They look great without the uh, coating on it. Nice contrast with US mags. All right, thanks for watching.